Hello everyone. So today, obviously, things are looking very messy. It's very crazy in here. If you just take a look around, boxing things up, things are getting crazy. I wanted to let you guys in on what's going on uh, and do some DIYs with you guys today. So first of all, let me kind of explain. We are moving out of state in two weeks. Craziness is just really, really fast and really, really crazy. So with that being said, I'm gonna keep my website open for one more week. So this time next week, next Friday, I'm going to make everything out of stock so that we can get all of your guys' orders shipped and ready to go before we leave. And then I will re-add everything once we get there and we're all settled, probably towards the end of September. So I did have a question for you guys. It's kind of messing up our whole, <laughs> It's, it's putting a wrench in all of our release plans for our craft kits. So my question is, if we do a Halloween craft kit, will you still want it if it's uh, starting to be available towards the end of September? Obviously, it's going to take some time to ship to you. We typically say 7 to 10 business days. It could be sooner than that. We try to get them out as fast as we possibly can. The nice thing is that we actually ordered... A second laser so we are gonna have two lasers which means we can cut double the amount at one time and then I also have family there who is going to be helping me as well so hopefully we can get those to you a lot faster so if you will still want Halloween craft kits by the end of September to release and then to ship out end of September beginning of October let me know and we can definitely do that we will roll out our Thanksgiving winter and Christmas kits really fast um towards the beginning of october so that you guys can get crafting those and have them for when those seasons and holidays hit so yeah it's all kind of crazy i am going to cut back on my videos i'm going to try to do one video a week um for the next couple weeks but there may be a couple weeks where i don't have a video out just because i'm trying to unpack a house and I've got three little kids and it's just, it's going to be insane. So bear with me while we go through these changes. By no means am I closing down shop for good or I'm not going to do videos anymore. As soon as I get there, everything will start back up just as normal. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a little insane for a couple weeks. With all that being said, let's go ahead jump on into today's videos. I have some really fun fall DIYs for you that I think you're really gonna love. So let's go ahead and jump on in. For this DIY, I'm gonna take one of these signs that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I love these because they have that wood look frame to them. I just think they're really cute. I took the little foam flower off the top and then just to get that hot glue gone, I heated it up with my heat gun and just scraped it off. Now I'm gonna take my glue stick and put that around all the edges and the inside because I'm gonna lay a piece of scrap paper down on top of it. I get a lot of questions if this actually holds well and for me it does. I'm really bad at putting Mod Podge on my projects and keeping it wrinkle free so this is just the easiest way I can do it with you know without getting all the wrinkles. If you can do it with Mod Podge by all means do that. I just prefer a glue stick. So I'm just going to cut off the remaining scrapbook paper off the sides and then I got these pumpkins that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take three of those out and paint them. These ones were shaped differently than the pumpkins that we got last year. They have more ridges in them which I think is really cute but I wanted to give these a good coat of a spicy pumpkin type color. I just think this is really pretty for fall and I'm going to try to add some detail to it as best as I can and to do that I'm just going to take some brown paint and with a really flat, smaller brush, I'm going to try to get in those grooves of where the pu a pumpkin would naturally have grooves. Hopefully you can tell what I'm doing here. But my trick in doing this is not letting the paint completely dry while I go with these in-between layers. So the orange on my pumpkins is still wet. And then I'm going in with that brown, drawing the lines or the grooves. And then going back over it with the orange, going back over it with the brown. Just kind of a back and forth process. And then I also do the same thing with some white. I'll draw some white on there where a, the grooves of the pumpkin would be. 
and just kind of going back and forth just a lot of blending a lot of layers and I just did this until I got it the way that I liked it uh, the way that I thought looked cute you can I mean there are so many different ways you could do this you could just leave it plain if you wanted but I just went back and forth and back and forth until I liked it And then I also did the same technique with the other pumpkin that I'm going to be using, but I'm going to paint this one white. So I will give it just one coat of white paint and then I'll just take the same brush that I'm using the whole time. I'll dip it in the brown paint, mix a little bit of white with it, draw the lines, keep going over it, do the white, do the brown, really just over and over and over again until it comes out the way that I like it. <laughs> So it's just a lot of messing around with it and blending colors. I just think this is really fun and it's actually really relaxing for me. So pumpkins are one of my favorite things to paint. Then I'm going to take this thankful word that you can get in a pack from the Dollar Tree with a couple other words. And I wanted to tone down the galvanized look to it. So what I did was just I took that same paintbrush that had that I had been using on the white pumpkin with the white and the brown and I just kind of dabbed all over it and then I wanted to make sure that it popped off of the white scrapbook paper so I took some gray paint and just kind of went around all the edges. I just wanted this to look really messy, just you know kind of old and worn so I just kind of distressed it up a bit that way. And then I'm just going to hot glue my two orange pumpkins to the bottom on either side and then I'll hot glue my white pumpkin right down to the middle and you only have to put the hot glue on the sides where they'll touch the orange pumpkins. And then I'm just going to take some gel super glue onto my metal word because hot glue is really hard to make work with this. It just dries really fast. So gel super glue is what I found to work. And then I'm gonna make two bows out of some twine. I just wrap it around my index finger and my thumb twice. And then you just take an excess piece of twine and wrap it around the middle and tie a knot. And that's all you have to do to make really cute twine bows. And I'm gonna make two of those, one for each of the orange pumpkins. And then for the middle pumpkin, I'm gonna take some raffia and I'm just going to put a couple strands together and do two loops tie it together like a school bow and then cut off the excess hot glue it to the top and that's it for this DIY these were so much fun to do I think this is super super cute So for this DIY, I'm going to take this fabric that you can get from the Dollar Tree and have some buffalo check, which is perfect for fall, it's perfect for Christmas, it's perfect for everything. <laughs> I just love it. So I'm just going to start cutting the entire thing into strips. So I just do about three squares in between each strip and I'm just going to cut the entire thing into these strips. And then once that is done, I'm just going to lay a whole bunch of them all on top of each other. I'm going to fold it into thirds and then I will cut each section out. Now once I've done that, I am going to take these buffalo check pumpkins that you can get from the Dollar Tree in a pack, I believe, of five. Now I did not have like an actual big needle to go through this. It's more of like a big knitting needle, um, but this still worked. I was able to push my little knitting needle. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Remind me in the comments. I did knitting for a while and now it's completely... It's, it's, it's gone. It's out of my mind. So basically, I am just stringing my pumpkin through the string. I was able to use a knife and cut a little hole in it as well. 
and then you'll see that I'll use a skewer stick to make the holes in there as well. So, you know, it's a whole ordeal, but string your pumpkins on there. I'll do one pumpkin and then I'm going to do some wood beads. So I will do a smaller wood bead and then a big bead in the middle and then the same size smaller bead on the side. And I just keep repeating this process with the buffalo check pumpkin, the three beads, buffalo check pumpkin, three beads until I have run out of pumpkins from the pack that I used. Now, I should have done this step before, you know, while I was cutting. I could have just completely skipped this step, but I decided that I wanted my strips to look really messy. I wanted them to look ripped and frayed. So I just took each strip and cut a little slit on either side. And then I'm just going to go through and rip each of those strips on either side so that they are all nice and frayed. Like I said, obviously, if you just rip the strips originally when you were cutting you could completely skip this step but I didn't even think about that when I was doing it so had to go back and do it. Once I have all of my strips cut and frayed now I'm just going to go on and start tying them onto my twine. And I'll do one in between each thing that's on the twine. So I do one in between each bead, do one in between each pumpkin, and I just go along the entire garland is what this is going to be. And I even took the strips that I ripped off, the really small ones, and put those in there. I wanted to get it as thick as I possibly could. One other thing that I thought that would look really cute is if you had some sort of white material with the buffalo check pumpkins, that would look really cute because the buffalo check pumpkins do get a little lost with all the fabric being the same pattern, but I still think it looks really cute. You could also do the orange buffalo check pumpkins, but I didn't know if that would, you know, I don't know look weird with orange and black and white. I don't know. Or you could also do the velvet pumpkins that they have at the Dollar Tree. Anything will work. So I just made it as fluffy as I could. And then I'm going to make two tassels for each side. So I just take some twine, wrap it around my hand about 25 times, take the excess twine that is on the end of the garland. And then you're going to take some more twine and wrap it around towards the top of your tassel and just wrap and wrap and wrap, tie a double knot, You'll cut off the loops at the bottom and you'll just do that for both sides. You'll have two really cute tassels on your garland. And I think this one is so much fun. Place it on a shelf with your other decor. You could even hang it as a little kind of banner or out of some baskets on your tier tray. There are so many different possibilities, but I just think this one is so much fun. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard of them before, they're an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. You can explore new skills or master other skills you might already have. I often have people reach out to me with questions on how to start their own YouTube channel. One class that I recently came across was a YouTube success class by Marcus Brownlee. He had so many great tips and tricks from what kind of equipment to use and how to edit your footage. Among so many other fun classes on Skillshare, you can also find crafting classes, learning how to draw, even self-care classes, which I think is awesome. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get one month free of Skillshare so you can explore your own creativity. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's jump into the next DIY. So for this one, I'm going to take out my chalk couture. You guys, I absolutely love the pumpkin transfers that came on this one. You get so many different kind of patterns and I just think that these are all so much fun. So I grabbed these wooden houses that I got from a pack at Target Dollar Spot for $5. You got three of them and they were a couple different sizes. And then I grabbed this transfer from chalk couture that has all the different kind of fall things in it. I don't know what it is about montages of like fall stuff. 
I think that they are so much fun. And so I just kind of aligned my transfer with my block and kind of found which words I wanted on it. And then I took several different of the chalk paste and just went to town and used my little detailed squeegee tool to apply this. Now, I know that some of my subscribers have commented about how expensive Chakratori is. It can definitely be expensive to start up. One thing that I would suggest if you're wanting to try it, but maybe you don't have the money to invest in it right now, is to try the Chakratori Club. It's like a monthly subscription box and they send you a transfer and the paste packets so that you have the paint and the transfer and it's only $20 a month. So I think that's a great way to try it out if you're wanting to see what it's all about. Give it a try. See if you like it without investing so much money into it right away. So I'll have Chalk Couture linked in my description box. I am a designer with them and I personally really, really love them. If you can hear my child scream in the background, I apologize. He's going crazy at the moment. Anyways, if you want to check out Chalk Couture, I'll leave it in my description box and... Uh, I think it's really fun. I think it's really relaxing. Chris and Kay got me hooked on it and the fall stuff I'm just dying for. So you peel your transfer off, you wash it so that you can use it again and look how stinking cute this turned out. This DIY is going to be super simple and quick and easy. You're going to grab one of these little autumn pillows from the Dollar Tree. And then this little frame and sign came from Target Dollar Spot. All I'm going to do is cut the pillow apart. I'm going to cut out the front of it that says give thanks with the pumpkin and the buffalo check. And I'm just going to cut it down to size to the back of that frame so that I can insert this into my picture frame. That's all I'm going to do. Just cut it down, insert it into my frame, put the backing in, and you have an adorable pumpkin sign. I just think this is super cute. I only spent maybe $2 on this. That's it for today's video. Let me know which project was your favorite. If you have any questions about my channel or my website, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer everybody. And uh, yeah, any orders that are still pending or orders that come in from now to Friday, don't worry, we will get them out ASAP. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye.